Vegan activists converged on the steps of the State Library to prepare for their peaceful march down the streets of Melbourne's CBD on Saturday the 28th of April. Their message was simple. They wanted animal liberation. The march was in response to a new documentary which has been released to private screenings. Titled Dominion, the film is seven years in the making. It is the second animal rights film from director Chris Delforce. Dominion is a new documentary focusing on how we as humans use and abuse animals, mainly focusing on the food industry, but also touching on clothing, entertainment and scientific research. Aerial drones teamed with hidden cameras has enabled activists to give perspective into what they say is the mass scale and context of animal exploitation in our society. One of the finances for the Dominion documentary is the former vice president of Citibank, who is now a passionate vegan activist. I've known Chris uh, for a long time, and I've helped fund some of his uh, projects in the past. I'm a merchant banker, and I'm a venture capitalist for good causes, and Chris's work is the ultimate good cause. We humans torture and kill two billion sentient, living, loving animals every week. We stab and suffocate one billion ocean animals every eight hours. 10,000 entire species are wiped out every year because of the actions of one species. Today, veganism is one of the fastest growing social movements in modern society. It is a philosophy and way of living which seeks to exclude as far as is possible and practicable all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, clothing or any other purpose. Veganism is becoming mainstream and people are waking up. Whilst a growing number of food outlets and clothing retailers are opting to cater vegan products for their consumers, vegans are still the minority in everyday society. Um, I really don't care. It's my personal opinion. I couldn't give up chicken now. That's the only meat I eat, so why would I? Animals do need to die, just like human beings need to die. It's a dark thought, but to balance out the population. Often the belief that plant-based diets are sustainable can be classed as extreme, with many professionals advocating for a regular diet that consists of meat, dairy and eggs. But one woman has created a handbook that aims to help vegans adapt to living in a non-vegan world. I'm a vegan psychologist and so I've offered a, a coined a phrase that is going to help this movement, I hope, called Vistopia, the anguish of being vegan in a non-vegan world. And to give people tools and strategies, particularly when talking to other professionals who actually say that um, there's nothing wrong with that, people are just anxious or depressed. When we see documentaries like this, we really should be concerned. It's a normal response of any feeling human being. So I think we're only starting to see the beginning. I think we're going to see this movement grow and we're going to usher in a vegan world. Activists were content, vowing to continue their fight. This march signified the launch of six months of coordinated actions which aim to systematically tear down the walls of what they call the greatest injustice in human history. Do you guys have any other planned actions coming? Yes, we do. Uh, we've actually got a disruption happening tomorrow. We've got about 110 people coming to that, so that should be pretty exciting. Um, this week we've been focusing on animals who are in laboratories. The activists began their chants down Swanson Street until the intersection of Burke Street where they held the intersection before continuing to Federation Square, finishing just after nine. My name is James Aspie. I took a one year vow of silence in 2014 to raise awareness of the suffering in animal agriculture. Animal activists in the thousands are making this the largest animal rights march in Australian history. No doubt this particular way of life is evolving, with younger voices being heard. But eating animals is not right because uh, eating them is pretty much torturing them. Mitch Clark, Deacon News.